You know, one saying that comes out of every golfer's mouth more than any other comment is golf is hard. And it is hard. In fact, it's very hard. So the question is, when we're offered clubs to make this game just that little bit easier, why do we choose to ignore them? So in today's video, I've got two clubs that make an element of the game considerably easier than it necessarily is. But I've still got a feeling that we refuse to play either of them. Right, so the area of the game that I'm referencing is the short game. And these two clubs that I'm gonna show you, well, they've got a lot of similarities, but they've also got a lot of differences. And the one that you might choose to play, well, that's gonna depend on how you like to play certain shots. But either way, I think they're gonna be massively favorable for most average golfers, and I think will reduce your handicap. Right, so the two clubs in question, one is from Ping and it is the, uh, the chipper, which I've been mass massively favorable of. And the second being from Cleveland, which is from their Smart Soul 4 range, I've chose the gap wedge. They have a sand wedge, a gap wedge, and also an all out straightforward chipper in their range as well. But I've chose to do this kind of head to head as giving you two really simple options as to make chipping and the short game in general a whole lot easier. These two clubs, like I said, have a lot of similarities in the sense that they are both wide sole. They've both got a sort of, uh, a, a lot of game improvement elements to them, if you like, with plenty of bulk and mass, but they are very different in terms of loft and how they get the ball from A to B is again, quite, quite different. And they're the bits that we're gonna have a look at. And I'm gonna try and find out if one of these is more favorable than the other. And should you be considering putting one of these in the bag and why? Right, okay, so let's put these two clubs to the test. And the first uh, scenario we're gonna pitch ourselves in is we've got about, I'd say 25 yards into a flag. Nothing in front of us, no bunkers. So we're very much, uh, we're getting this ball running, but what we've got to consider is there's a considerable camber from right to left and quite a slope in front of the flag and also no room behind that flag. So it's a really difficult shot to execute. So what we're gonna try is three shots with each and see what, which one comes out more favorable. And I've got to say, before we hit the shots, I would guess that this one's gonna favor the chipper. Right, so the second scenario should in fact favor the club with a little more loft. So I'm gonna play, I'll play first of all with the chipper. So first of all, we're in the rough. Second thing, we've got a bit of a downhill towards the hole. So it's a really difficult shot with whatever club you've got in your hand. But like I said, ideally you would think naturally you'd want a little bit more loft. So like I said, let's try it with the kind of, uh, with the chipper first of all and see how we fare. You know, I actually played that where I thought, it just didn't camber in at all, fairly straight. So pleased with that. But you could see that uh, I'm just keeping this same motion for every shot that I play with the chipper. That's not bad either. In fact, that could go in. Wow, really pleased with those um, two efforts to be fair. And I've got to say, when I consider all the wedges that I could possibly play in the bag, I'm not sure that I could do any better than, uh, than what I just have done with that. Uh, well, certainly with the, the first two, second one, you can see the problem when it doesn't pop it up and doesn't clear the rough, and maybe I just quit on that third one just a little bit, then you can see the issues that you face with, with the chipper. So we'll set up exactly the same scenario. We'll go over to the Cleveland uh, wedge, we're gonna call it, and see if that extra loft just helps me get up and above that uh, little bit of area of rough that we struggled with with that last one with the chipper. Interesting, arguably, we would say that uh, in that effort, we probably got three better returns than we did with the chipper. And just that ability to pop it up probably helps. So a little bit of additional loft there helped. And it's one thing that I would like to have seen from the chipper itself. And that is something I think Ping might introduce. And that's uh, a variety of lofts available in that club type. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if that's something Ping introduced in the future. But I reckon that one, well, that went down to the Smart Soul Cleveland, I think. Now, it's important for me to mention that both the scenarios we've seen so far were really extremely difficult in terms of shots you'd want to execute with whatever wedge you had in your bag. 
in terms of trying to get that ball up and down. So we've got to bear that in mind and I've got to say in both situations, I reckon that these two clubs were more favourable than me playing other options, let's say, that I could have uh, perhaps gone for. So our third scenario is uh, one that definitely favours something with a bit of loft. I think we've got to go over the angle of the bunker. We've not got a great deal of green to work with. So again, a real difficult situation. And as I wouldn't fancy this shot uh, no matter what club I had in hand. The question is, do any of these make it any easier than me? I want to get on the green right now. It's not about proximity to the flag. I've got to avoid the bunker and I've got to get myself onto that short stuff. That is the only goal right now. So, like I said, a little bit more difficult than perhaps you'd want to be looking at in terms of this chipper. You'd be normally looking at a bit more loft for this. Well, if that gets a good bounce, that mightn't be too bad. And certainly, we've achieved the first thing, which is let's get it onto the uh, onto the dance floor. And as you can see, with a bit of a fuller swing, the chipper still manages to pop the ball up in the air, which uh, sort of defies the the loft that's presented at address. That's not too dissimilar. Needs a kick on. We're two from two, and. Uh, well, i take those uh, any day of the week. I think that one is probably looks to as though it's got to pin high, maybe, I don't know. So there's an element of uh, required in terms of how much this is gonna run out as well. That's a little lower ball flight. And that could put, that could go right, that could go in. That could go in. Okay, I'm going to throw one last thing into the equation and that is where the gap wedge definitely has uh, some added flexibility if you like and that is a shot from some sort of distance. We're 80 yards out from the flag and in theory that's not where you choose to play the chipper. So uh, in terms of uh, well versatility in the bag this one really should be something that favours the gap wedge because you can play it as a full shot obviously. I don't think that's got enough legs and go. Not quite. Let's try and work out the yardage. So that's 80 yards out, sort of three quarter swing. Let's see if we can get a little bit more and get one to pitch on the green. That was a really good ball flight. That should be good. It should be pin high. Sit down ball. That only just got there. So clearly you need to work out your yardage with, is with this kind of wedge and work out what your distances are. But it gets the ball up with a towering ball flight and that loft really comes in handy with that kind of shot. We'll have a little go with the chipper and see what we can uh, manage. But like I said, this is not a scenario that you'd normally look to be playing this thing. But why not finish the video and see if we can get one. Well. If we can get one inside the uh, the gap wedge, then that will be uh, a bit of a bit of a kick in the teeth for it, really. Right, here we go. Oh, this could be really good, you know. Well, I can't see from down here. It was right on line. It seemed to get a little bit snagged on the fringe. I'm not too sure, but either way. Maybe there's some versatility in that chipper that I didn't know exists, but you can see there's a considerable difference in the ball flight. Anyway, we've tried it in a number of different scenarios. We just need a bit of a summary and I've got a clear idea why I think one may be better than the other in most average golfers' bags. Do you know what? Yeah, again, I take that over any other club that I have in the bag in terms of uh, my short game. And that was the ping chipper. I said I'd do a summary and uh, I think at some part during the video I also said that a lot of this would be down to a sort of personal preference thing and I do believe that to be the case. Both of these clubs have been manufactured to make putting short game easier and they definitely do that. And it will depend on what you like to see at address I think that will make the big big difference. The ping chipper is effectively just like looking down at a very small compact iron head 
Whereas obviously the uh, the Smart Soul for this particular model, the Gap Wedge, it's like looking down at a lofted wedge, but packed with that kind of help and forgiveness that uh, is effectively a game improvement style wedge. So they both help considerably. They both make life easier. For me, I would choose the chipper. I'm much more confident with it. I like what it does. I like the way it comes off the face in terms of the consistency, in terms of my strike ability. I think with the gap wedge, you've still got that element of the ball. Like I said, being able to control ball flight and distance is still an issue dependent on your delivery. Even with that help of that wide sole always helps you to not chunk it or blade it. It does all those things. But effectively, it still needs a control element that I don't quite have confidence in. Whereas with the chipper, it seems to work incredibly well. I said I know what the difference is, and my theory in terms of the difference is the way the two clubs sit at address. Many people have suggested that this is a, you know, you can play your eight iron, your nine iron, your seven iron, and get the same results with your ping chipper. I disagree, I can't do that. And the reason I can't do that is the big difference is the way this sits at address in terms of its lie angle, and it's very, very much more upright. It's a very much more different feel altogether than when I'm stood with my nine iron and have to sort of manipulate where that sits. So personally, I just love this thing at address. I've got a good control over distance. I think it's consistent in terms of the way it comes off the face. But then if you're asking me in terms of the versatility, maybe there's a little bit more versatility in that gap wedge in the bag. But my own personal preference, and I think I will be doing, is sticking that in the bag at some point, making sure I also carry a 58 degree wedge as well for bunker shots, flop shots, that kind of thing. So that's my summary. The summary is this, these two are very, very good clubs and I reckon would uh, solve a lot of problems if you've got short game issues and therefore ultimately reduce your handicap. Right, that's me done. I'll see if I can finish that one off. I'm quite confident I've got a putting ability to finish that one off for, uh, for a par. I am off for getting a bit of a drink, I think. It is ridiculously warm here in the UK. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, give me your feedback, give me your comments. Let me know if you've tried either of these two and what your thoughts are. And I will see you all very soon.